can you describe the situation that you were in at the beginning of the relationship that you described as narcissistic? Where were you up to, like financially, personally? What was going on in your life? Actually, at the very beginning, I was fine. Financially. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Emotionally, I wasn't that fine, but mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of that. Actually, I broke up with a guy. Um, I would say it was March. And then I decided, like, I'm not going to date anyone. And then I received this message from Dubai that they are... You were in um, Croatia when yeah. you broke up with that guy. Yes, yeah. I was in Croatia, yes. I'm talking about Croatian guy. So uh, broke up with him in March mm -hmm. and then uh, received this message about um, personal trainer position in Dubai. It was June. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, yeah, maybe I should try. And I kind of took it for granted. And I had like four interviews and then received the message, an email, uh, August or September. Uh, congrats. Uh, you're part of the team now. <laughs> I was like, what's this? <laughs> I was kind of confused, but happy in the same time because I wanted to leave Croatia. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then I was single mm -hmm. and I made kind of strong decision that I'm going to stay single for a long time and uh, change the continent, change the city and moved to Dubai. Mm -hmm. And actually financially, I wasn't that bad. Uh, I was able to pay my rent, to pay everything for like basic life. So I didn't uh, live with um, um, with the colleagues with in the dorm or how do we say? It's kind of dorm. Uh, yeah, dorm is. Yeah. Yeah. So I lived on my own, paying my rent, my bills, everything. I was fine. J just for people who don't know. It's actually, dorm could, could be quite nice. It's more like a barracks. It's like a military barracks here. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yes. And uh, I wanted to live on my own. And uh, actually, I was scared. And I felt like <laughs> overwhelmed because Dubai is huge, is shiny. And actually, four years ago, I couldn't see the tree. <laughs> now so, it's way different. So just, just for, the, for, the, for the people who are watching who don't know, uh, what happens is some of the, the gyms here, they recruit people, often from Central and Eastern European countries. Um, yes. You do have, did you have any Brits or Germans? Brits? No, it's, no. it's Croatia, German. Serbia, it's, it's not even Poland. Croatia. You can't no? find Croatians uh, here. Who's the, who's You're going to find Serbians, uh, Romanians. Right. Uh, Bulgarians. Okay. Uh, you'll find, I don't know, it's, I think, yeah, pretty much that's it. And they bring them over, they kind of stick them in a barracks scenario and then tell them you uh, have to sell. It's really, really um, uncomfortable. Yeah. I would say it's, it's not good conditions for life. It's really uncomfortable. You don't have your private space. Uh, you're sharing room with few more girls. You don't know them. You're mm. sharing bathroom with so many people. You're sharing kitchen. You're sharing everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I didn't felt <laughs> like doing it. Yeah. And I wanted to live on my own. So I rented my own apartment. And uh, that was actually December. Mm. And uh, in Wuhan, uh, COVID happened. Mm -hmm. And already everyone was talking about COVID and stuff. And I was just like... Yeah, they never going to close the gyms because mm. this is all about uh, building like stronger body, building, building your immunity system, creating better uh, like um, habits when it comes to food. They never going to well, close it, the gyms. Are you saying it was in the news here in December? Yeah, oh. it was in December, like three years ago when COVID happened, actually four when Wh COVID happened. But that year. Yeah. Uh, 20, 2020. Yes. 19 actually uh, the and end the end of, that's yes the December. end of 19 the end yeah. of 19 yeah. the end of the 19 which is why it's COVID-19 yeah um, so financially uh, I wasn't rich mm. but I wasn't that bad I mm. was able to pay my rent uh, I already got a job mm. so I had my salary I had some savings mm. and uh, I had trust in myself that I'm gonna be able to convert some clients from the gym floor mm. and 
to do my sessions with them face to face. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that bad at the very beginning. It yeah. was kind of fine. Um, actually, I felt very overwhelmed, but in the same time, um, I was brave <laughs> mm -hmm. to to just to be patient, mm -hmm. actually, and to wait my moment. But then, like, COVID happened, and uh, people were already panicking, and they were not going to the gym every single day. They were skipping their sessions. So already you could feel in the air that the situation is changing and something is going to happen. So, so you were in a new country. Uh, you weren't in a great financial position. It was the beginning of potentially, we didn't know, but potentially a global pandemic that could lock down the world. And around that time is when you met uh, your, your ex. Yes. What happened? Actually, he was the only person I knew back then. Mm. Uh, we worked in the same gym. We, we were like colleagues. And actually, it was a perfect situation for him. Because we were kind of forced to hide everything. Mm -hmm. Because if management knows that mm. we are together and we are dating, then mm. they would change the location for one of us. Yes. So... Um, Actually, we used to spend like whole day at the gym, having like morning sessions. Then we were having lunch, working out, then afternoon sessions all back to back. So like, yes, 15 to 16, 15 to 16 hours per day, I would say. Of, yeah. of, of work. Yes, every single day. Yep. So I was kind of trapped mm. and locked mm. and... It felt like literally like a golden prison. So you have this promise. Mm -hmm. This is an amazing opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you have to handle this because beautiful life is waiting for you behind the corner if you survive this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was literally like that. Mm -hmm. Like one huge fantasy in the head. Mm -hmm. But in the same time with some little sparkles of the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're so ready. In a, in a sense, you're already in a narcissistically abusive relationship with the gym and the business you're working yes. for yes that everything was whole environment was so narcissistic that he'd, that he'd pulled you into he'd yes pulled you into that space yes because it was so isolated mm -hmm. i didn't have even the feeling that something else in dubai exists mm. than that gym back then yeah like nothing that was your whole world yes 100 percent. so uh talk to us about him oh yeah it's like actually typical uh, narcissistic uh, uh, relationship abuse because mm. it started with love bombing. But back then I didn't know anything about this kind of relationships. And I thought it's just like he likes me. This is normal. Mm -hmm. He treats me well. Although like my gut feeling was screaming, mm. literally screaming, not, mm. not even whispering. Don't do that. Don't go there say no it was screaming mm. i remember very well one day i was sitting uh, at the coffee shop next to the gym and i was texting to my sister and i told her like i texted her uh, something's very wrong with this guy i still have those uh, messages because mm. um like a couple of months ago i thought that i was dreaming about this and mm. then i checked all the messages and i found i found this message when I wrote this to my sister, and it was at the at the very beginning, I I couldn't describe like what's wrong, but I felt it because very often he was so passive aggressive, and uh, he just like stopped talking to me in the middle of the shift mm. for no reason, and then he found some like s literally silly stupid reason to treat me like that. Like you left uh, those plates there and Wait. you should pick it up. And I'm like, seriously, I have another client in 10 minutes. I'm going to use these plates. And then I was like, why am I yeah. exhausting myself with like explaining this kind of silly stuff? Okay. But like it was like real, real love bombing at the beginning. Because once when you move to Dubai, uh, now you know that actually. Because if you don't have your ID, you can't have your mobile phone. Yes. 
except this like touristic one. And that one is very limited, I think for four weeks or something like that. At least it was like that four years ago. It's I don't know, maybe same. it's the same. It's the same. So he told me immediately, okay, I can make the phone number for you on my ID. And I was like, this is weird. I'm a complete stranger to you. Mm. Why should you do that? Like, we share nothing. Mm. We share just the workspace. No, no, don't worry. I know Dubai is tough. I'm going to help you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, you were telling a story and he was your friend. And then all of a sudden you were in a relationship with him. And he Literally was... all of a sudden, yes. And Suddenly it happened. <laughs> okay. Um, and then he was getting angry with you for leaving plates out or something. Yes, so at, at, the, at the gym floor. So like two plates of two and a five kilos. I'm not joking. So you were not two hundred of kilos of plates. <laughs> so you you uh, you arrived in Dubai and then and then quickly afterwards the relationship started. Uh, actually, a relationship started uh, in uh, late late January, mm -hmm. late January. But the beginning, it all started immediately. Right. Immediately in November, I'm going to help you with this. I'll help you with this. I'll help you with that. It was so weird. He was doing, he was doing a lot for you. Yes, he was doing like uh, very important things for me, I would say. And like that, that, uh, he helped me to find an apartment as well. And I was like, you're wasting your time. Literally, you're wasting your time. In my head, it was like, I'm stranger for you. You're working whole day. I mean, like, why you're going with me to the shops to buy all these things? Why you're helping me to find an apartment? It was so weird. And later on, he told me, I think, 200 times per week. Mm. Uh, you would be nowhere if I didn't help you. And you wouldn't be able to survive Dubai without me. He told me this, like, so many times on a daily basis. Because mm. everything, what he's done for me, and that's a fact, because mm. he helped me to have my Dubai phone number immediately. He helped me to find my apartment immediately. He helped me to get my checks immediately. Everything. He found a car for me. And he helped me with all the basics mm. you need in Dubai when you're there. And afterwards... I've heard so many times on a daily basis, yes. If I didn't help you, you would never be able to survive Dubai. You're nothing without me. Mm -hmm. So many times. But I never asked him for help. If I asked him, oh, can you please do this for me or that for me? I mean, uh, I'm that kind of person who has like big problem with asking help. Because uh, actually, if I have a plan to ask someone to help me, I have like mental preparations of <laughs> like, I don't know, 48 hours before that. And then maybe I'm going to be able to ask you, look, please help me. So first thing first, I'm not that kind of person. He was so pushy. And this is actually why it felt that uncomfortable. And in the same time, in my head, he really created this belief because I didn't have like space nor time to see if I'm going to be able to survive Dubai on my own. And then if I see that I'm not able, for example, to survive Dubai on my own, then I have two options. The first one, I can seek for help mm -hmm. from him or some of my colleagues or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or I can go back home because I'm not a street person. Like, I have home, I have my own like bedroom, I have some money. Still, I have the same clients from Croatia who are in my, they are still in my online working with me. So mm. uh, honestly, if I made a decision to go back to Croatia, they're going to be watching this. The, the uh, sequence of events was you arrived and then, and then you were with him. Um, yes, actually, yes. Pretty much. And actually, then, yes. So November, you arrived. Uh, by January, you're together. Yes. And all, you've gone through pretty like, like three months of sort of love bombing. Yes. Very intense. Very intensive. And then how soon did you move in with each other? March. Okay. And this was into your apartment? Yes, into my apartment. Yeah. Exactly, yes. Talk, talk about that a little bit. Uh, actually, I was living on my own, uh, way closer to the gym. Mm. So he was pushing from the very beginning. We should live together. We should live together. We should live together. It's going to be cheaper. Uh, like, we are both, like, in our 30s. So why not? We should, like, try. It will be different. And I was kind of confused because all my friends were in long-term relationship. 
they were divorced and married for the second time or they were like dating someone. And uh, all the time they were telling me that I'm too childish mm -hmm. all the time. And I had this like back vocals in my head all the time. Yeah, maybe we should move in. I'm 30 plus. So yeah, he seems like a nice guy. I don't know why I don't want to do this. I really didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then he started blackmailing me because so many times he told me if we don't move in together now I'm gonna stop talking to you I'm not gonna be your friend anymore and he knew back then that he's the only person I have in Dubai so at that at that time you're living in an apartment yeah. on your own where was he living business bay in a, uh, far away from the gym <laughs> and was he in a group rental no was he, he, was, he had his own apartment? No, actually, uh, the worst part of the story, you don't even know. He was living with his ex. These uh, are, the, the, this is like real narcissist. These are, these, are, these are important elements of the story. Stella. Yeah, it's, it, it, I going, had a plan to say this. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna draw this out of you. Yeah, so, yeah, sure. I don't have a problem with that. So he's living with his ex? Yes, he's living with his ex, saying to me that they but are... You, but you two are in a relationship. Yes, exactly. And we were kind of forced to hide our relationship because really, if management knows that we are seeing each yes, other, they would yeah. separate us. And I didn't want to change the gym. He didn't want to change his, the his gym. Ex so, yeah. His ex didn't work at the gym. Uh, yes, but not this one. <laughs> yes. He is but a not, she, droye, this man. <laughs> yes, he is, he is a gigolo, actually. Yes, gigolo. He's using, uh, gigolo. Yeah, he's using women to survive. Actually, at the end, I realized that he's married in America. Yeah. You shocked? Yeah, I didn't share everything. Yes, he's married. To who? <laughs> yeah. Who's he married to? Uh, actually, he wanted to, once when he was uh, overdrugged, he told me that he's married. You're laughing. I'm not joking. Yeah, he's married. I lived with a married man and I didn't even know that. Okay. Who, uh, when did he get married? Like how long before uh, this story? Before this story, maybe he six seven years before that and who when he was in his early 20s because he married for the green card for and, the visa and who, or is it a green card uh, in america if uh, you want to stay there uh, it, it's kind of green card it, it's a it's a visa i don't want i don't want to say yes because my sister will shout at me because she is an american citizen and she's like i've explained this to you it's not called a green card that's what they call it in the fucking movies let's say a visa he got, okay. it, he got it for something. Uh, a yeah, residency and, status. Uh, he told me, actually, he told me this. Yeah. He told me that he's married with this American girl. And mm. he told me that he never touched her. They were living together. And I was like, okay. He is an angel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they lived in the same house, married. Yes. Married like, because you know how it did goes. He, did in, he pay her to get married or how did he do this? No, actually, because they were working together as well. It's a pattern. Why would she marry him if there was no sex? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I never met he this used, girl. He used mind control. He was like, she married me. I never touched her. It's weird. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. Uh, he's married man. Nice. He's married man. It's good. But like uh, back then he was over drugged all the time as well. Back but I was, didn't in America. Yeah. It started a long time ago. But over here, drugged, you said. Yes. Um, you mean he was using a lot of drugs? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We don't say overdrugged. <laughs> I mean, you can if you want to, but he was using loads of drugs. Yes. What was his favorite yes. drug? Yes. What's his favorite? Uh, his favorite, hmm. Uh, I would say weed. But he was using other, other stuff as well. So he's a married man. Yes. He's married. What a naughty fellow. Yeah. That reminds me of my story that I told you. I have to tell you something. And then the girl shows up. Like, <laughs> yes. I, I have a husband. <laughs> and I'm not talking on Spanish because I'm panicking. <laughs> I have a husband. I'm married. <laughs> and he doesn't like you. Yeah. <laughs> we already know he doesn't like you. I he's, can't believe this. Yeah, he's married. He's married. Okay. So um, track record of kind of con artistry in the gigolo sort of. You know, yes. kind of that way. I exploiting women. Yes, this is what I told him. You're exploiting women mm. to survive, mm. to pay rent, mm. to have your food covered, mm. to buy your drugs. Yeah, and that's it. This is you. <laughs> it's so weird. So once <laughs> you had, once you'd moved in together, um, what was that like? At, at first, was it okay, or what was it? Like? No. 
was bad straight away. It was bad straight away from the very first day. It was really bad. How was it bad? So uh, actually at the beginning, when we started living together, uh, that happened at the first day of quarantine in Dubai. Mm. And the whole atmosphere was very weird. Mm. So I wasn't sure, is this about COVID? Is this uh, because we are panicking because gyms are closed? Um, we know nothing about reopening the gyms. Mm. Is this because he made decision to leave his ex mm. and to move in with me? So maybe this is a sign that he is sane. So yeah, if you're a normal human being, you will feel like crap doing these kind of things. Mm. Like leaving one apartment, living mm. with this girl, mm. and then moving in into this apartment with this girl. He split up with his... Yes, with his ex. Oh, he'd and the his same story was, day. His story was he'd already been split up with her for a yeah, couple of months. Yeah, yeah, uh, nearly for a year. Because actually what he told me... Um, but it's very easy to create this kind of, of the story. Because once, when you sign the documents, you rent apartment for a one year. Mm -hmm. And then they were together mm -hmm. in the apartment. And it's not that easy to leave the apartment and to move on because you have to pay everything in from... This, in this context here, for people who know, it's a feasible story. It's quite possible that he, if he's not rich, that he has to just stay. Yes. It is possible. Yes, it is possible. Do you so think he was... Uh, talking up with her sexually or do you think he wasn't he told me of course that he had nothing with her for like 10 months yeah but i don't trust him sure. now sure. <laughs> back sure. then i wanted to believe this version you know and for me it made sense because we are living in dubai and you signed contract for one year you're living together if you want to leave you have to pay all the deposits and you're starting from the scratch, you need like literally like small, small fortune to build mm. your life from the beginning. So I was like, okay. And then I suggested him uh, to go live with his friend. So you can just go to live with your friend because he's living alone as well. Sure. Why not? Sure. Uh, no, I don't want to because we are 30 something and why should we waste our time on dates and I don't know, Dubai is huge and all this like silly excuses. So he pressured you and pressured yes, you. Yes, 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 all the time, every single day on a daily basis, mm. he was doing that. And I was kind of, I was really confused and weak. I was confused and weak because in my head, when he used to tell me, uh, I'm the only person uh, you have here. And if you don't want to live with me, mm. uh, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. And this is your like last chance. And I was, <laughs> I was afraid actually. Yes. I'm sure. I'm sure. Cause you're, you're here on your own. What was the worst memory that you have of that relationship of that time? Uh, him hitting me. When did that happen? Cause actually uh, that was for the first time that male person mm. is doing that to me. If we are not thinking about your mom slapping you when you were a naughty four-year-old kid, mm. you know? So that was the first time I experienced this kind of violence as an adult, actually. How long into the relationship were you? Uh, we were together, let's say, it was um, February, and we moved in together March. So, so living, nearly one year. Nearly one year. Nearly one year living together, yes. What were the circumstances? Uh, it was really ugly because um, he traveled to Eastern Europe mm -hmm. with his um, friends and they were on drugs all the time and they were doing like techno parties and stuff. And I was working and like <laughs> living like normal, decent life. And then he arrives back. And he was kind of depressed. Like, what's this? Mm. <laughs> like, you should be happy because you're back here and I'm waiting for you and mm. stuff. And actually, uh, he told me, I don't know, like, I feel down and I need uh, space and time uh, to feel better and to relax and to rest. And I was like, 
this is exactly what you told me eight days ago. This is why you were traveling. <laughs> I was a little bit confused, but I told him, okay, okay, there's your space and your time and your bed and whatever you need. So that was Friday actually. And uh, Saturday morning, I woke up early in the morning and I had three sessions back to back, not at the gym. Mm -hmm. I was driving whole the morning. I used to work at clients' homes as a freelance in their compounds. For people who don't know, that's the torture of driving around Dubai to different places. Driving in Dubai is a wonderful experience. You should try it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've driven in Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur and London. And uh, yeah, it's Dubai. driving around Dubai is, is tough. It's wild. Yeah, it's wild. We'll say that. We'll it's, say that. it's wild. Mm. So I finished my morning sessions, uh, back to back three sessions. It took six hours to finish three sessions. <laughs> arrived back home and he was still sleeping mm. and yes I was angry mm. I was really really angry mm. and I just uh, turned on the lights mm. and I was like you're still sleeping it's like 1 p.m mm. you were traveling for an eight days uh, resting with your friends like what is this mm. and he just got up and slapped me my face yes immediately and, no, no and I did. end up on the floor. He hit it you was hard. that bad, yeah. He's um he's a big guy. Yeah, he's very tall, and I would say he's strong. He lifts a lot of weights. He lifts, and he's doing some boxing as well. So yeah, it was really bad, mm. well, and well, I couldn't believe it happened. Honestly, what did he do after he hit you? Uh, nothing. He started like preparing coffee for himself. Like nothing happened. Literally nothing. He just uh, took his water, started preparing his, his coffee, like nothing happened. What point did you start making your plans to leave the relationship? Uh, early January that year. So had you already started making your plans to leave? Yes. And then he hit you? Yes. When did you come across the material on narcissism? Um, way before that. Oh, okay. I would say maybe seven to eight months how before did, this happened. How did you find material on narcissism? What, what were you searching for that led to narcissism? Uh, I already had a psychotherapist and I worked with her for like six to seven months. And uh, I spoke to her about this and she sent me your link. <laughs> ah. Yes. Ah, okay. She sent me your link. Right. And this so, is... So it's not that long ago you were watching me on YouTube and now you're here being interviewed. No, it's two years. Yes, it's a little bit longer. It's not, yeah, it's a little bit longer two than years two years. Bit. Okay, two years something. Yes. Um, so she said to you, "There's a chance that you could be looking at narcissistic personality disorder." Yes, she literally told me that she thinks that I'm dating a narcissist. Um, what was the? So you started planning in January to leave. Yes. You told me um, also that he was spending a huge amount of time playing video games every day. Yes, every single day, every single weekend, every single holiday as well. Yeah, yes, yes, holidays as well. Because I remember the uh, Christmas mm. before that. So we were talking about February when he mm. slapped me. Um, now let's go back to Christmas. Uh, he was playing video games from the early morning. And... Uh, uh, he was like smoking all the morning. And when I asked him like to go somewhere for a lunch because it's Christmas, he started screaming. He started, I don't know what's that. It's, 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 it's like huge amount of anger. I could feel like huge amount of anger, not related to me, obviously, because asking someone to go for a lunch, you just can yeah. say, Look, maybe tomorrow, today, I don't feel like having lunch. And he told me literally that I screwed his Christmas. For the first, it's not your Christmas because you're Serbian. It's my Christmas. <laughs> and I would really like to go somewhere. And then we started fighting, of course, because I literally told him it's not your Christmas. It's my Christmas. And yeah. it's a weekend. Even if it's not Christmas, it yeah. was weekend, I remember. Even if it's not Christmas, it's a weekend. We should go somewhere. Mm. Uh, no, 
I want to spend my day playing the video games. I'm sick of talking to people. I'm not like people. <laughs> I'm not so many of them. It's just me. It's two of us. We go for a lunch. I told you I don't want to have a lunch outside. I, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm. Okay. You ruined my holidays. And I was like, just I wanted to have a lunch. That's it. Yeah, he used to play video games all day long. And this is exactly what he was doing immediately when he moved in. I didn't know that before. I didn't know that. But he was a video when we gamer. No. When we what started you saw living was a, together, a hot, a hot stud in the gym. Sorry, a hot stud. Yeah. You know yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like a hot guy in the yes. gym. Yes, yes. Who's who playing video games like uh, twenty-four hours when he's off and smoking all day long? L like I would never say this is this guy. As far as the the hours per day, how many hours per day do you think he could do? Me? How many hours? No, how many hours do you think he could do? Of it? I know. You Literally don't. twenty-four if he doesn't faint. So if he he would w wake up and then play it all day until he slept? Yes, correct. That would make me sick. I gave away two PlayStations, I told you, because I got addicted yeah. to Call of Duty Zombies. And yes. after an hour and a half, I'd be like... <laughs> whole day. When I say whole day, I mean whole day. We wake up yeah. that morning. Like, we woke up that morning. Yeah. And uh, he started playing video games immediately. Coffee, water... Mm. Uh, this uh, thingy, yes, coffee, water, this smoke mm. thingy, mm. and uh, video games. Uh, lunch break, mm. maybe small nap, mm. video games. And uh, I don't know, it's uh, actually weird. Mm. You can, because I just don't like video games. Mm. Uh, he was connected with his friends uh, from Serbia, so they mm. were playing all together. Mm, and fun. I could, I could hear their noises. Yeah. I could hear them. Screaming and shouting. Exactly, because, yeah, yes, because yeah. so many times he didn't put, like, uh, his earphones or them whatever. Yeah. Because I could hear him, I could hear them, mm. everyone. Mm -mm -mm. So, yeah, all day long. Every single day, three weeks of quarantine time. Tell me about uh, breaking up with him. How did that take place? Oh, that was tough. Because actually I made a decision to leave in May. And uh, I booked a ticket for 15th May, mm. two years ago. Mm. And uh, actually um, it was very weird. Uh, in Literally in my body, I felt I'm not going to be able to come back in this apartment ever again mm. but somehow in my head i didn't trust myself mm. in my head it was like maybe when you take a break and maybe it's dubai maybe you're overwhelmed because of the weather and you didn't travel for so long maybe once when you take a rest maybe you're gonna be able to come back but in my body i really felt like vomiting mm. i was 100 percent sure that I won't be able to force myself to enter that apartment ever again. Mm. And uh, actually, he told me something very, uh, I would say, psychopathic. Mm -hmm. When I made the decision to leave and when I told him I'm going to Croatia for uh, four months and I took my checks, I took everything, like checkbook, because I already made a plan to rent my own apartment and to leave him. Uh, by the way, he never um, gave me my deposits back. Never, ever. Mm. And uh, he was spending the money from my card. I never had his bank detail, bank mm. card details. He had mine and he used to spend the money from my card even after the breakup as well. So um, I left in May and whole summer I spent in Croatia. And uh, I never came back <laughs> to that apartment like ever again. And he told me this like for me. It, it was really like from the horror movies. He told me like, you have no one. You lost all your friends in Croatia because you never traveled there. Uh, you're here for a year, year and a half. You don't have home. Mm. Your sister is 20 something. Your brothers, they have their own lives. Your friends, they have their own lives. Mm. Your parents are getting older. You don't have home anymore. You don't have friends. This is your home. Mm. I'm your home. Mm. I'm never going to forget this. Mm -mm. It was sick. Because mm. I, I, I still remember, I can recall the feeling I felt when he told me this. Mm. It was so bad. It was so bad. Like how, you how have it, how no feel? friends. How did it feel? Sorry? You said you recall the feeling. How did it feel? Creepy. Creepy and it felt 
like a little part of me um, really uh, believed in this. One small part of me, yes. What advice would you have for people who are looking to escape narcissistically abusive relationships? Uh, you have to have the savings. That's the first thing first. Money. So in Money, 100%. So instead of uh, fighting with your narcissistic partner mm. and uh, actually wasting your energy on fights with a wall, uh, you should just work save your money mm. and leave that's the first thing first because if you're fighting all the time with your partner and there is no hope mm. that he can understand you you're gonna s like stay there forever mm. <laughs> you're stuck you're screwed that's it yeah so yeah the first thing first stop arguing stop fighting stop explaining and mm. save your money Hey folks, if you would like to learn how to get strong with me, click this link below and get my course.